Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to our October 2024 CTSS quiz. I have 10 excellent cases to show you, so let's get started. In this patient with hematuria, what's the most likely diagnosis? Now, again, all of these things could be related to hematuria, but if you look very carefully, you can see it subtly in the left kidney on the axial view, disregarding the cyst. There's thickening in the upper pole calyx, which you can see much better on the coronal view. You can see that there's thickening, and basically the left upper pole calyx is infiltrated by tumor. This is a classic appearance for transitional cell carcinoma. CT is very good if you're careful with a five minute delay of picking up small transitional cell carcinomas of the kidney. This is not a case of renal calculi, and it's not a blood clot, and it's not papillary necrosis. A really nice example of a transitional cell carcinoma. What syndrome does this patient have? Well, what do I see? I see multiple cystic lesions in the pancreas, and then I see solid tumors, particularly well seen in the left kidney. So you ask yourself, what syndromes give you both renal cell cancers, as well as additional renal cysts, as well as pancreatic cystic lesions and pancreatic adenocarcinoma as well? It's not Sturgey Weber. It's not neurofibromatosis type 1. You can get renal artery stenosis with neurofibromatosis. It's not MEN2. The answer is it's von Hippel-Lindau disease. Now, von Hippel-Lindau is a hereditary tumor syndrome owing to germline mutations in the VHL tumor suppressor gene. It's located on the short arm of chromosome 3. It's autosomal dominant, prevalence around 1 in 36,000 births. Around 80% of patients with von Hippel-Lindau inherit the disorder from the ineffected parent, while a male arise de novo in about 20% of cases. The mean age of initial diagnosis is about 26 years of age. So an important thing to remember, syndromes are always challenging for us, right? We don't see them all that commonly, so you forget about them, but it's something you do need to think about. The least likely diagnosis in this case is, well, there's a very large right adrenal mass, there's neovascularity. My first thought would be that this would be a primary adrenal cortical carcinoma. We have seen sarcomas occasionally, these aggressive malignancies of the adrenal gland, which in fact this was. You can get metastasis with very large lesions, hepatoma, melanoma, are two of the things I think about. But what you're not going to get is an adenoma. Yes, sometimes adenomas can be 8, even 10 centimeters. That's rare. But they're not so solid, and they don't have neovascularity. So the correct answer to this case, the least likely diagnosis, is going to be adrenal adenoma. The most likely diagnosis in this patient with hypertension now we have a adrenal mass. It's not the kidney. It's not the liver. It's hypervascular, really hypervascular with central necrosis. I guess adrenal carcinoma is a possibility, though hypertension is not classic. The most common clinical presentation for a ACC is going to be Cushing's. Lymphoma, it's too vascular. Melanoma could do almost anything, but truthfully, it is too vascular for melanoma. This is an excellent example of pheochromocytoma. Pheos are very vascular. Often the entire gland is vascular, but in many cases you have central necrosis. And this was a really nice example of a pheochromocytoma. The most likely diagnosis for this incidental finding is... Well, in the region of the right adrenal gland, there's a calcified mass, dense calcification, no enhancement. Pheos can have calcification, but they're irregular calcification, so it's not this. It could be a simple cyst, but a simple cyst is not going to have calcification. And adenomas can have calcification if they've bled, but not this rim-like, very dense calcification. When I see something with very dense calcification like this, be it liver, kidney, and especially adrenal, 
it's due to a prior hematoma. Most commonly, it's due to trauma, but there are other causes, obviously. But dense calcification, ring-like, the best answer is A, a chronic adrenal hematoma. The least likely diagnosis in this case is... Well, I see a, an enhancing lesion in the head of the pancreas, and I see some prominent vascularity. Now, least likely diagnosis is the critical point. If I would look at this case, my first thought is neuroendocrine tumor. MCN, I don't like that much. MCNs can be vascular, but they're usually not as vascular, and they're more likely in the body of the pancreas. Serous cyst adenomas can fool you, right? We talk about solid cyst adenomas, we talk about that solid serous cyst adenomas can have a, a stretching of vessels around them, perhaps like this case, and you would see it a lot better if I gave you coronal views. This, in fact, was an unusual serous cyst adenoma, but the least likely diagnosis is an IPMN. The most likely diagnosis in this case, you see a large mass toward the apex of the right lung, but you realize there's rib expansion and rib destruction. Yes, you can get rib destruction from a lung cancer, so you might think about that. It's not a simple bone cyst. Those are smaller and maintain the margins. Aneurysmal bone cysts are a possibility. They do occur in rib, but typically are not so large. On the other hand, an expansile bony lesion, particularly rib, large soft tissue mass, may be a little bit of enhancement, and simulating a lung mass, that answer is fibrous dysplasia. And this was a great example of fibrous dysplasia. The most likely diagnosis in this 50-ish year old is, I see a mass that's cystic and solid is eccentric in the anterior mediastinum. A thymic cyst is a consideration, but usually it's purely cystic, not that solid component. Usually it's diagnosed earlier, but it could be diagnosed late. Lymphoma, when it's cystic like this, it would have been treated, and we said this was at presentation. Germ cell tumor is a possibility. We do see germ cell tumors being in the abdomen or chest, which can be cystic, but they usually have more vascularity. The eccentric nature of this tumor also is helpful. Thymomas typically are eccentric. They hang down along the cardiac border. And although this is not the perfect answer, this in fact was a cystic thymoma, I'll give you some credit for saying a germ cell tumor. The most likely diagnosis in this patient with abdominal pain. It's always hard to give only two images and have you make a diagnosis with bowel, but we surely know this is not normal small bowel. I don't see a mass for malignancy. What I do see is dilated bowel with a transition point in the mid-abdomen, probably in the lower abdomen. The vessels look like they're kind of stretched. This is going to be a small bowel obstruction with internal hernia. This case also shows you the importance of looking at the coronal views, be it just coronal or coronal with volume rendering. You want to look for transition points always when you're looking at bowel, but you want to look at the vessels also. If you saw all the vessels in this case, you would see they were twisted, and that goes along with an internal hernia. In this patient, 10 years post-cardiac transplant with right lower quadrant pain, what's the diagnosis? What I see is a large mass in the cecum, and my first answer is a cecal carcinoma. That's what this is going to be essentially every time. It's not the look of Crohn's alone, unless Crohn's developed a cancer. And yes, you could be fooled. Ulcerative colitis could be really thick, but I gave you the cardiac transplant. Patients with cardiac transplants 10 years out can develop other malignancies. They can develop a range of malignancies because of immunosuppression, and one of them is lymphoma, and this was a good example of a B-cell lymphoma of the cecum. Well, those are 10 excellent cases. I hope you got them all right, but more importantly, I hope you learned something, and I look forward to seeing you next month. Have a great day, everybody. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. 
We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.